Again, we have it written right here. I went ahead and wrote both the book version of it as well as my own version of it. Um, I am not the one that came up with this. Other books do use H instead of Delta X. In fact, that's how I learned it. But I highlighted the one that I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using the limit as H approaches zero of F of X plus H minus F of X all over H. The only difference between these first two and these next two is the first two are in general for any X. The second two are at a specific point if you plug in the X value. I will never do these second two. I don't like doing them the way the book does them at a single point. What I like doing is finding them in general, and then you can plug in any value you want. Whereas if you do it their way, the ways that I just crossed out, if I said, for instance, find the slope at two and three, you'd have to do the problem twice. If I did it my way, I do the problem once, and then I just have to easily plug in the numbers two and three. So doing it in general first really, really helps you out. So how in the heck are you gonna evaluate the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h? Again, I cannot express how much I hope that you've already gone through the lines and functions review packet because it, we work through this problem together. I show you two different ways of doing it. The first way of doing it is finding out what is f of x plus h. Find out what is f of x plus h. The second thing that you're going to do is you're going to find out what is f of x plus h minus f of x and simplify it. And then the third thing you do is you divide by h. After you've done all of that, and only after you've done all of that, do you evaluate the actual limit, okay? So you can do it all at once, or you could do it in these one, two, three, four steps, um, checking out what's going on. I'm gonna do it as a stepwise approach at first, and then I'll show you how to do it the other direction. So here it says, find the slope of the graph of f of x equals x squared, at the point 2, 4 using the limit process. So again, this is really weird because we're finding the slope of a graph, which should be easy, right? That should be m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We should just be able to do change in y over change of x. But the problem is, is we're not finding the slope of the graph between two points. We're finding the slope of the graph at one single point. So again, our technique here is let's find the slope of the graph through two points and then bring those points infinitely close together. We're going to be using the slope of the tangent line at that point. So what we need to do is we need to find the limit, sorry, we need to find the limit as h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h at x equals two because that's the value that they give us right there. That's our goal. So let's do the first step. The first step is to find f of x plus h. f of x plus h. So what is f of x plus h? f of x plus h would be x plus h quantity squared, but we wanna go ahead, that's everywhere we saw an x in the original function, we plugged in x plus h. That's how I got that, x plus h quantity squared. Let's go ahead and FOIL that out. So that would be x plus h times x plus h. So you would have your x squared. You would have your, sorry, x squared. Then you would have your xh and xh. So that would be plus 2xh. Your last would be h squared. So when we clean up x, f of x plus h, we end up with the first step, which is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. The second thing we want to do is we want to take all of that and subtract off the original function. Take everything we just got and subtract off the original function. So we got x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And we want to subtract off the original function. Remember, the original function was just x squared. Let's do our simplification here. x squareds are going to cancel. What are we left with? we're left with 2xh plus h squared. And I'm gonna give you another hint here. What you wanna do is always try to factor out an h if possible. So if I factor out an h here, there's an h in both terms. 2xh divided by, 2, but divided by h would be 2x. And h squared divided by h would be just h. So that would be the factored version, which is what you want. Always try to factor out that h. That would be the factored version of f of x plus h 
minus f of x. The third step here is we're going to take exactly what we just got and we're going to divide it by h. So let's take what we got, h times 2x plus h, and now we take that and we divide that by h. Notice, here's why I had you simplify out that h, factor out that h, because that's what we're going to do is factor out that h and simplify it. We're simply left with 2x plus h. We move on to the fourth step here. The fourth step here is we want to take the limit as h approaches 0 of whatever we got. So let's try that. We're going to have the limit as h approaches 0 of whatever we got, and we got 2x plus 4. Sorry, it's 2x plus h. I don't know why I said 2x plus 4. 2x plus h. That's an h. Don't know what I was doing there. Okay? So, just now and only now, we're finding the limit as x, h approaches 0 of 2x plus h. So what in the heck did we just do? What we just did was we looked at the graph of x squared. We found the slope of the secant line between a value of x and x plus h. And that slope of the secant line was 2x plus h. So the slope of the line between the two points would be 2x plus whatever the difference is between them. That would be the slope of the line. But now we want those two points to get closer and closer together. So now we want to take the limit as h approaches 0. Well, the limit as h approaches 0, that's pretty easy to do on this problem because all we have to do is plug in a 0 for h. So that would be 2x plus, well, 0 for h would be 2x. So the slope between the line, or the slope of the tangent line, for any given x value for x squared is twice that x value. That's our slope of the tangent line. That's the slope of the tangent line. Again, we started by finding f of x plus h. We then subtracted off the original function. We divided that by h and simplified. And then we evaluated the limit as h goes to 0. That's the slope of the tangent line. But we wanted it specifically at a given point. We wanted it when x equals 2. So this adds on a fifth part to the problem. Here's part 5. All we have to do is plug in x equals 2 to our answer. So our slope of our tangent line would be equal to 2 times the x value, which is 2. In this case is 4. So what's the slope of the graph or the slope of the tangent line of x squared at the point 2, 4 using the limit process? And the answer is 4. Okay, that is all this problem asked for. That is what we're going to do. I'm going to extend this problem in just a little bit here for you in just a second to show you what in the heck did we just do visually. So here we go. Here's what we did visually. Here's the graph of x squared. I'm just talking roughly here, okay? Imagine we had the point 2, 4 here. There's a tangent line, a line that touches the graph at that point, and the slope of that line represents the slope of the graph. That's that red line that I just drew there. So the question is, what is the slope of that red line? And we just got the answer, 4. The slope of that red line is 4. But I'm going to challenge you to go a little further, because I want you to be able to check to see, is my answer even realistic? What is the equation of that red line? The equation of the tangent line at that point. We know the slope is 4. We know that slope is 4. And we know that the point is 2, 4. And if I know the point and the slope, I can easily find the equation of that line using y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, that would be y minus 4 equals, well, our slope value was 4, times x minus 2. Okay, let's keep on going. So now I'd have y minus 4 equals, well, let's distribute that 4 to both terms. I'd have 4x minus 8. Add 4 to both sides. And I'd have y equals 4x minus 4. That's the equation of my tangent line, y equals 4x minus 4. So how do I know this is right? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to a website or download an app on your phone or iPad or tablet called Desmos. Desmos is going to be your absolute dream this semester. D-E-S-M-O-S. -E Desmos. 
When you use Desmos, um, this is the reason that I only had you guys get a very cheap um, scientific calculator instead of a graphing calculator. Graphing calculators cost over $100. Well, I had you get about a $15 calculator for this course, along with Desmos, which is graphing utility for free. So anytime I ask you to graph something, I want you to use Desmos. It's the easiest and most natural. In Desmos, once you open up Desmos, you're gonna be able to graph something. You could visit it on your computer on the website, desmos.com, or you could download the app and it'll open up there. And the first one, I want you to type y equals x squared, and on the second time I want you in, on the second line I want you to type in y equals 4x minus 4. Just hit enter and it'll let you enter a second line. So I want you to graph those two lines simultaneously. And what I'm hoping for is that you're going to see this exact picture that I sketched right here. You should see the graph of x squared. You should see the line that goes through them. And if you zoom in and touch the point, it should actually label the point 2, 4 for you. So you should see we found the black line. We found the red line, and the red line is the tangent line of the point. In other words, the red line, the slope of the red line, represents the slope of the black line at that point. Okay? So that was a complete extension of the problem, but I'm one of those people who like to think, why the hell am I doing this? What, what is going on here? Why would I even care about doing this? This problem just asked for the slope of the red line. I had you extend it to actually find the equation of the, the red line and graph it to see visually what the heck we just did. Again, the problem just asked for the answer four. That's all that was expected in this problem. We did our five-step process to figure that out.